Okay, so welcome to the fun pie and let's begin our very first problem. Now before I even start to write the code for this problem and teach you how to write the problem, our solution, three points, three very crucial points. Point number one, the complexity of the problems is gonna increase as we proceed with this series. Now right now in the very initial movies, you'll feel that, hey, this is something everybody can do, but uh, later on the complexity will increase quite a lot. We are even gonna tackle down how to analyze the datas or web scrapping and a lot of things will come up for sure. Point number two is whenever you see these asterisk mark in all of the problems, that means your job starts from here. Now, very top will be the problem and I'm gonna be solving it along with you. And as soon as we hit the asterisk, this means you need to solve further of the problem. Obviously, this is gonna be based on our first problem set, then you'll be doing this. A lot of you are gonna say, hey, Boo, you are not giving us the solution for rest of the problem. No, I'm not gonna be giving you because programming needs a little bit gentle kick in the, you know, the word. So you really need to push yourself a little bit harder and these are not extreme problems after this. So go ahead, try it yourself. Now, the point number three is you can find these kinds of solution anywhere on the internet. But the whole point of the series is to make sure that I teach you how the solution was built up. So quite a lot of talk we have done. Now let's read the problem. So the problem is really simple. My dad wants to buy a new car and he's very picky about getting the number plate of the car. He went on to the tra transportation department and they have given us the direction that we can choose any number between 4,000 to 6,522. Okay, sounds good. And now my dad is saying, hey, I believe so much in the numerology. So uh, seven is my lucky number. I, uh, I can get a number which is a multiple of seven but multiple of five is not lucky for me. So he's not looking for any multiple of five. He's looking that it should be a multiple of seven. Okay, right, that's cool. And we need to write a problem uh, for the solution. So that's gonna be interesting. And once we write the code for it, then I'll show you what the remaining part is here. Okay, so let me get a lot of enters here. And I need to remove this. Okay, that's cool. So first of all, let's write a pseudocode. So what is the problem going on here? First of all, we need to uh, confine our, obviously you have understood that we need a loop here. So we need to confine our loop on some range. So we have to say, take a range uh, between, uh, what can I say, 4,000 and 6522. Okay, so that's the problem number one. Okay, we'll take a range and we'll do a loop uh, between these numbers, that's cool. And then the second problem is it should be a multiple of seven. That means if I just talk a little bit programmatically, then let's just say uh, I is our number, which can be any number in between that particular range. Then if I divide it the, uh, by seven, the, the remainder should be zero. So if I talk about programmatically, if I divide it by seven, then uh, the modulus or the remaining should be zero. Modulus gives you only the remainder, the percentage sign. Okay, that's cool. And now here's the interesting part. We need to apply and logic here. It's not about our logic. Either one should be true or the second should be true. No, we need to apply both of the things. So that's the first part. And that's the first uh, problem set of the solution. The second is it should not be a multiple of five. And how can I do that? I can simply say and the i, when I divide it by five, for example, when I say person by five, it should not give me zero. So if I write this, this is gonna be wrong because it should not give me zero. So I'll put an exc exclamation there. There we go, we have built up a logic. And finally, we need to print all numbers. There we go, sounds simple. And this is how exactly every problem is being solved. So now we don't need to look at the problem, we just need to look out here. So uh, we need to find out what is, how we can actually loop through a range. So uh, let me just uh, quickly give you a simple uh, browser there. Uh, where is my browser? There we go. So we need to look for something range in Python and range in Python, okay. And obviously we are looking for Python 3. 
So, Python range function explained. Okay, we are looking for something which we can rotate through it. And obviously we can see there is a range function and it has a couple of parameters like range, start, stop, and step. Okay, so we can give it a start, we can give it a stop. And there we go, a simple cool example, a range in five and it prints out from zero to four. So it's not inclusive. If you want to include it, make sure that you give it a number afterwards. Okay, pretty cool example. Now we have learned it and that's pretty good for us. So now let's write a code for it. So first of all, we need a, a variable to store all of our values. So uh, let me call this as uh, num cars or car nums. And that's gonna be a simply list. Let's give it an empty list for now. We'll be storing all of our numbers here. Now let's write a code for i in a range. And that's how we write the loop there. And notice it gives us a suggestion there all thanks to the add-on of Python suggestions. So we are looking for this, oops, let me write it again. And there we go. So start and stop, what are the ranges for us? So let me give it a start range there. And the start range is 4000. So there we go, 4000 comma. Now we need to give it a stop range, which is gonna be 6523. 6523 because range is non-inclusive so we have to give a one number ahead okay we don't need to give the step because that's an optional argument if you don't give it no problem at all okay looks cool and i'll put a colon there okay there we go now we are inside the loop now we need to test for every i so i'm going to be writing a very simple logic here so let me just write it there if i is and exactly i'll be copying and pasting the above logic here so pretty easy i modulus by seven, if it is there, then it's good. Now we need another kind of a condition here. And then I'm gonna be saying I should, when I divide it by five, okay, it should not be equivalent to zero. So equivalent to zero, where is equal zero? There we go, looks nice. So it should be a complete divisible by seven. Uh, but when I divide it by five, it should not be completely divided. Okay, there we go. We have built up a pretty easy logic. Now let's just have our num cards dot append. This is again a pretty easy method that we have here. And there we go. Now we would like to store all of this here. Uh, we can do it right now. It's going to be pretty easy. But let me show you one trick here. Pretty interesting one. And uh, what I'm saying is here that you can give it an I and that code is gonna be working really fine, but I like it to be converted into the string. How can I do that? I just have to apply a str function there and now it's this I is actually being converted into the string. And why am I doing it? Because when I actually print it, uh, let me just get out of this loop. Uh, when I print it, let me just give you a print. When I print this, uh, I want it to be separated by the comma. So uh, this is how you write it. This is my separator and I want it to be join. This is the syntax here, join. And now you need to give it the variable or the list. In this case, it's numcar. Okay, let me get here, how, what's happening here. So this is what we are appending every time, but we are storing not the numbers, the strings here because I want a string to be presented as comma separated and this is how the join works here. Pretty simple, pretty easy. We have started very, very basically. So let me just open this up and let's see if it works or not. Python 3 and it's gonna be a dad car num problem dot py. Let's hit enter. Okay, so we have got here a huge list here which start as 4004 and uh, 4001 and you want to do a quick check then you can simply open up your spotlight and can say 4011 divided by 7 and it's divisible and uh, right now it's just a divisible but you know you got the point we we want a complete divisible here so this is the entire point now let's go back and talk about one more thing now you, what you have to do we have done this problem simply now make this code modular. What you want to do is right now we have written every values as hard coded. You want to convert this code as modular so that upper range should be asked, the lower range should be asked, and the multiplier should be asked, avoidable and preferable multiple should be asked. So I hope you can do that. It's gonna be pretty easy. You just have to use a little bit of your brain. I hope everybody will be able to do it. Pretty simple example that we have followed up. Now I'll catch you up in the next video.